Next news. Uh, this one's pretty intense. You guys bear with me. Disaster is unfolding in Syria as videos emerge of U.S. allies being slaughtered and hundreds of ISIS prisoners escape during airstrikes. So it's hard for me to really give a summary on um, the entire news article. So I'm just going to give a little bit of what's going on. A U.S. official told CNN on Sunday that the, com- that the campaign to defeat the terrorist group ISIS in Syria was over for now. And ISIS has a second lease on life with nearly 100,000 people um, to rejoin their jihad. I don't necessarily think that's true. They don't exactly know if uh, the people have escaped or if they have been removed to a different location. You want to give uh, some um, background to people that haven't been following the news so that the mm-hmm. like these are the ISIS members that the Kurds were holding in northern Syria. And now the Kurds are, um, because Turkey, because Trump announced that they're moving out of northern Syria, Turkey is moving in to take part, to ta- uh, create a buffer zone in northern Syria, to create a place where, uh, to take over the Kurdish area, um, to create a buffer between the Kurds, which they see the YPG, which is the Kurdish uh, unit, um, you know, a- K- Kurdish group, which they see as terrorists. Um, terrorists that are anti-Turkey uh, create a buffer zone between them and Turkey as a way to defend Turkey and as a way to create a place where they could bring all the Syrian refugees that are in Turkey back to Syria. Um, but by doing that, t- uh, c- the Kurds in Syria were holding uh, were allies of United States that attacked. Um, that helped United States attack ISIS, and they're holding. They were holding a lot of ISIS prisoners, and by by doing by Trump moving out of that area, and uh, betraying the Kurds, which were they were allied, because, which were the United States allies. Uh, now Turkey can attack the YPG, uh, but now the YPG, which is the, again the Kurdish group, is saying now they can't hold the ISIS prisoners, and why a lot of ISIS prisoners might be going free. Uh, and this is what you're saying. So, um, okay. So two things are saying. They're saying that the U.S. allies are being slaughtered. By U.S. allies, I mean the Kurd, the YPG. Uh, that's and also ISIS prisoners are escaping. So that's just the background. Sorry, Alice, for interrupting you. Go on. No, no, no. That's okay. Um. So, uh, where was I at? Sorry. I'm going to give you, while you find that, I'm going to also give you the counter narrative to all of this, okay? Yep. Okay, go on. Um, so, yeah, so that that's what we're looking at right now. We're looking at um, videos. I don't know, everyone here, if you're on Twitter, I'm sure you have seen the videos of what's going on over there right now. Um, it's been horrifying to watch them, and if you haven't, then I want to be your friend so you can teach me how to avoid this stuff. Uh, But the, yeah, so the Turkish invasion into Syria continues into its fifth day. Um, And I don't know, Armin, you... Let me, okay, let me, okay. So why don't you go ahead and and No, 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 sorry, sorry. I just felt like the reason why I messed you up is because I felt like some people might not not know the background so if we just go to this no i appreciate it i really do i just i'm i'm lost where i was i was in a was in a thought summary here so yeah yeah i know you wanted to talk about this so can you um can you tell us what you think is going on i just i just feel like what i've been seeing circulating is only one side of the argument and i'm gonna play devil's advocate here and i give you the counter narrative to all of this um, and again, please don't hate me for all of this. I know a lot of people are pro pro the Kurdish, pro anti Trump, pro Kurdish, anti Turkey on this, right? Um, so, but I but the the reason why I would need to give you the counter narrative is because I haven't seen many people give any of the counter narrative, right? So it seems like everybody is unanimously on one side of this, and it's fine if you if it's fine to have the position. And I mean, I'm against Trump's decision on this, but not for the reasons why most people are. Um, and I am also against Turkey's decision to attack the Kurds. But it's better to, be, to hold that position knowing what the counter narratives are, because I haven't seen anybody sharing the counter narratives. Okay. So, 
and I and I tried to, and I tried to create a list here of the things I need to go over, and my list is quite long, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to go over them. But the, one of the main points is that if you put yourself in the position of First of all, let me just tell you how hypocritical a lot of people are, okay? Even if, if Trump's decision was a wrong decision, I bet you, I bet you that most people that are now against Trump's decision to move out of Syria, if this was done by Bernie Sanders, they would have supported this, okay? They would have supported the same decision if it was done by somebody, like if Bernie Sanders were the president, okay? Um... They would have been like, yeah, this is a tragedy, but Bernie Sanders promised that he's going to pull the troops out, and that's what he's doing, okay? But they're not, they're not doing, uh, you know, so that's one thing, okay? Another, another point, I, but I, I'm, I'll tell you, I, I think that taking out of the, the, the troops out of northern Syria should have been done, but it was done in a, such a poor way. Like, I'm on a, on a, I, I'm not against this decision because he pulled out of northern Syria. I, I'm, I'm against this position because it was done in a very sloppy manner. Okay? And I will tell you what I think sh should have been done instead. Another thing that people don't tell you is that if you put yourself in a position, let's say Trump wasn't president. Let's say someone else was president of the United States. If you, if you yourself was uh, being advised by all sides you might have realized that there are two people that you could betray here uh, you could have you want to betray there are two people that is have been betrayed two groups of people one is turkey the other one is the ypg again the kurdish group in, in northern syria and we as atheists and secularists we might be biased and rightfully so, maybe, against Turkey. And we might be biased for YPG because the YPG on average are a lot more secular, right? But from a foreign policy perspective, if you had to choose between Turkey and the YPG, you'd probably strategically be more, uh, it would be more strategically wise to pick Turkey as a NATO ally rather than a small group that the YPG is, strategically. If you want to look at what the, na again, I'm just giving you the devil's advocate here, okay? Don't shoot me, okay? If you want to um, look at what the, t from Turkey's perspective, okay? From Turkey's perspective, you have to understand that Turkey is a NATO ally of the United States, part of NATO. It's a country that has a lot of uh, treaties, with United States, a lot of trading agreements. The Kurds are not a country, they're just a group of people in Northern Syria. And for, YP, for YPG is considered a terrorist group to one of your main allies, which is Turkey. Again, for us, it's really hard to look favorably on Turkey, given that Turkey is a, not just an Islamic country, it's an Islamic country where it's becoming more politically Islamic but every every freaking year, right? So for us as atheists, it's hard to accept this. But as a country, as the United States, looking at Turkey, they are a NATO ally. And we might see YPG as not a terrorist group. But and when so here's the thing. The PKK is record is another Kurdish group that is recognized as a terrorist group. Not just by Turkey, but by United States, by European countries, and almost any, any other country. is a legit terrorist organization, right? So what Turkey is saying is that the YPG is linked to PKK, which is a terrorist group. So that which makes YPG a terrorist group. And because it's Turkey who's saying that, we don't trust Turkey. Especially given that Turkey arrests all of their... They, they don't have any... Uh, unbiased reporting there is no free media in Turkey everything that they report is biased so it's hard to take them seriously when they report anything to us but this is their own fault because it, the truth is the truth is that the YPG is linked to the PKK okay but this is Turkey's own fault 
This is why a free press is so important in your own country. Because when you're so biased in your media, even if you're saying something that is true, nobody would believe you, okay? The truth is that the YPG has the same command structure as PKK. They share fighters. Fighters keep get going from one group to another. And if you look at every time there's an attack on one of them, the other side condemns it. Every time there's a victory on one side, the other one side celebrates it. So they are pretty much linked. Um, but so if PKK is a legit terrorist group that at has attacked Turkey, okay, this is, the PKK for Turkey is worse than ISIS for United States, okay, and wh worse than ISIS for all of all of the West. How many Westerners has ISIS killed? How many Westerners? Less, less than a thousand. Okay. How many Turkish? How many Turks? How many people in Turkey? Not Turks. How many people in Turkey have died because of the PKK? Around forty thousand. Okay. So the PKK to Turkey is way worse than ISIS is to all of the Western countries combined. Right. So when you have United States, which is a Turkey an ally of turkey okay which turkey has have holds u.s nukes for them which turkey has given united states bases military bases on their own soil for united states to operate on to go and wage wars against countries from a country so close to all these hot spots in the middle east that's what turkey has given to united states as an ally and then when united states comes and all of a sudden supports a group that turkey has considers a terrorist group this is why turkey says like everybody talks about united states betrayal of the Kurds. well what about united states betrayal of turkey as a country okay again i'm just giving you the narrative that other people don't give you all right and this is why united states so this is why united states when they took went to ypg and like hey let's we want to get rid of assad please help us uh and we want to get uh, fight jihadis in Syria, please help us. YPGs was like, yeah, sure, let's help you. You you have our back, we have your back. And when Turkey was like, well, what the fuck? Well, the United States came and said like, okay, you guys need to change your name because we don't want to help, because we don't want to look like we're betraying Turkey. So they, they said like, okay, let's rebrand ourselves and call ourselves the uh, Syrian uh, Democratic Forces and just let's in, put some Arabs in our group so they were not the YPG, but everybody knew that they were the YPG, right? And then here's the thing the the YPG was never la that interested in fighting Assad. They were just wanting to make that northern Syria autonomous. They, they attacked Assad because of United States supporting them, but they were never much interested in fighting Assad anyways, right? Um, they were interested in fighting ISIS and some other terrorist group um and, and again here's the thing um united states the, the a lot of the jihadis that united states is attacking they used to united states used to be supporting a lot of these jihadists against assad okay and turkey as well so just to be just to po i'm pointing at hypocrisy i want to also point at the hypocrisy of turkey turkey is now accusing united states as supporting a terrorist group and rebranding terrorist groups, like changing YPG to SDF, which is Syrian Democratic Forces. Like, you guys, we can see what you're doing. This is our terrorists, and you're just rebranding them and using it for your own, um, um, for your own good, but you are al allying with our enemies. And this is a betrayal of Turkey. But Turkey is hypocritical for mentioning that because Turkey itself, at the request of the United States, armed al-qaeda al-qaeda forces by rebranding them against assad so united states and turkey were turkey was ha happy to to support terrorist groups when it wasn't the kurds right turkey itself also re helped rebrand ter terrorist groups when they were fighting assad but now they're calling out the united states as rebranding their terrorist group uh, to scf so that's another point um Okay, so what else I wanted to mention? Did, does that make, does that make sense to you guys? Oh, uh, just to, just so that you guys don't think that I am complete like defending Turkey that much. Um, yeah, I just want to mention that because you shouldn't. No, I know, but I'm just giving you the counter narrative, right? 
But I'm po also pointing out the hi hypocrisy of Turkey. And I'm also going to point out that this whole anti-Kurdish move that Turkey is having, as er er Erdogan is having, wasn't something that they were originally interested in. Turkey is making a big deal right now. So I'm now going to stop the devil's advocate and I'm now going to go full on anti-Turkey a little bit just so that you guys don't shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> Turkey origin now is accusing everybody, oh, you're, talk you're cooperating with the Kurds, you're, you're cooperating with the YPG, which is connected to PKK, and PKK are the boogeyman, the evil, so evil that anything that even touches PKK or even remotely is connected to PKK, anybody that cooperates with that uh, is, is betraying Turkey. And they, they failed to remind you that they originally went directly to PKK and they were trying to negotiate with PKK themselves directly. Not with not even with YPG that is all connected with PKK. Turkey originally wanted to was going with demilitarization, being friendly with everybody, even negotiating with PKK, trying to de-escalate everything. So they're like, "Wow, this is great. Everything is working, right? Every, that's good. Everyone is doing and moving in the right direction." This was the path that Turkey was going with for a very long time. And Erdogan seemed to be continuing that. That was seemed to very, be very good. But then all of a sudden, a couple of bad economic decisions and econ uh, Turkey's econ economy going down um, and, you know, d down the toilet uh, and people becoming unhappy because it, Turkey's economy was going up very fast. And as soon as it goes down a little bit, people are like, what the hell is happening? And they might vote otherwise. And what do you do when people are unhappy? What do you do to get votes? What is the number one way to make to win elections when people are unhappy? When you have domestic issues that people are unhappy, what is the most surest way that has worked time and time and again to get votes and get reelected? What is it? Start a war. You scare the shit out of people. Okay? You bring external enemies and you wage wars and you tell people that they have to, that you the, you need them because because they're providing safety. This is what we see in Egypt. This is what we see in India. This is what we see in Israel. This is what we see in Iran. This is what we saw after 9-11 in the United States. And this is what Erdogan did. And it works, okay? So before like, hey, let's peaceful. Let's talk to the PKK. Let's be friendly. Let's demilitarize. And holy shit, we're losing elections. People are unhappy. Economy is going down. What should we do? Um, the, make the boogeyman out of the course and start the security threat that you need that that mobilizes people people like a strong man like a big strong president or prime minister or president that like oh he's defending us he's so strong he's a strong leader that's always works always works is the easiest way is that it's a cheat code of politics okay it's like when you're playing video games and you sub like you're losing and you just submit the cheat code and you win this is the cheat code in politics okay it always works okay and that's what Erdogan did we went on full on anti-Kurdish and and he won he won elections he, it worked for him and this is part of that strategy and and, it, and it's so sad because f this is not gonna work long term not for Turkey okay because guess what's gonna happen what's more likely to happen That's, none of this is for, for sure leave us let us know in the comment what you think but um what's going to happen is this is going to help assad this is what's going to help iran and this is what's going to help russia because turkey can't stay up there forever you just help you know united states left you're going to leave out of there and you know you just gave those territory to assad this is, this is fantastic for assad and also what you did is that you pushed the kurds back to the arms of assad because the kurds were not originally that much anti-Assad, okay? But now they need Assad for protection against Turkey. And t Assad is like, you, you, you know, you attacked me, but now you know you need me. I'm going to come protect the Kurd Kurds of Syria. And now you push them in back into the arms of Assad. And Kurds are like, Assad, please forgive us. We know we did you wrong. Yes, the Americans betrayed us. You, we, we, we were never interested in fighting you. We were just doing bidding, bidding of the United States because we needed that because we were, um, we were like sitting ducks against all these ISIS people. So we really had to do that. Please take us back, take us back. I say like, oh, it's okay. I could take you back. And we go together after the, after the Turks and Assad and Iran and Russia are like, yay. And then we got all these territories back from the Americans. And now we have much more control than ever before there. Um, 
this is going to be uh, like uh, you know again Turkey can't hold this hold this forever so why I'm against this decision is because this could have been done on a much better way um, you know you could have t um, come up with a way that the Kurds had an upper hand when they were talking to Assad you could have moved that a lot more slowly you could have brought in you're like we're gonna step out but for us to step out because why wasn't Turkey attacking this area before because American soldiers were there even if they were very few Turkey was never gonna attack that area if there was American soldiers there oh, Turkey would not have also attacked like there if there were UN peacekeepers there so United States could have gone and be like we're gonna move out of this area but we're going to bring UN peacekeepers in this area before we move out. All right? That's what they could have done. That would have made uh, Turkey's attack on northern Syria a lot more difficult. They could have also done something else. They could have been like, we're going to move out, but we're going to let the Kurds negotiate with Assad on uh, some terms on what's going to happen when the Americans come out. That way, the Kurds will have a lot more negotiation power against Assad when it comes to coming up with the deal and it would they would have been so desperate for Assad's support when the Americans moved out so these are the things that I would have done if I wanted to move out of northern Syria anyways sorry I talked for too long what do you guys think what's that what do you guys think um so a lot of your devil advocating there you already kind of gave the other side as well. I mean, what Turkey says, fuck what Turkey says. They're they're liars. They're known liars. Um, also, you brought up that Turkey's the better ally, I think, was the wording that you used, and I could be wrong about that. No, but strategically, again, strategically for United... Strategically, and that is, to me, just a, a moot point there because uh, the Kurds were also our ally. So it, it doesn't matter who should be better strategically. Um, Turkey has tons of human rights violations as well. Um, they're not the best people to ally with. And I understand what you're trying to say, but to me, that's just not even a, a point worth arguing. I was, um, I was giving you the perspective, if you're looking from Turkey's perspective, what it looks like, right? You're like, we get, and also, yeah. did you guys read, and I think this article actually stated it, that Turkey is actually now invading um, further south than they even said they were going to. So now they're in there, um, and they're like, no, we're just going to keep on going. It's cool. Right. Okay. Um, Any, yeah. Let's see. Uh, what do people have to say in the comment section? I'll check Facebook because I talked for too long. Let me see. By the way, mention Atheist Republic if you guys want us to read your comments. You were, you were saying in Israel, governments involved in wars lose elections. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's not, I mean, I don't know, because Netanyahu, that's not, mm, Netanyahu at least, yeah, has been trying to use security as a way, for example, to win elections. So yeah, you're right, Yuval, it doesn't always work, but it is a method that is used very much. So yeah, it's not as absolute as I was suggesting that it always works. Fair enough. Sometimes it doesn't work. But it is a method that is used very, very often. It's actually, it's actually it's also the um, story narrative in Star Wars. Actually, uh, you give up, um, you know. Anyways, but go, but go on. Um, did, is there anything else? People did the atheist, the atheist republic is tight. Will Philly is saying, how do you pronounce this person's name? And I never, I never managed to read the well. Will Philify. Will Philify. Okay. He's saying it's also worth noting that Assad was fighting ISIS before the U.S. got involved. Um, it's also worth pointing out that it seems like all the sides, every side is using Al-Qaeda and ISIS as a weapon, okay? Like, every side is fighting ISIS and Al-Qaeda, but every side, every side is also letting them loose <laughs> when they need them, right? Iran, United States, the Kurds, Turkey, and Assad... All of them, all of the ones that I just mentioned, have been fighting Assad, uh, ISIS and Al-Qaeda, and all of them have also used them, rebranded them, and letting them loose when they needed them. All of these groups that I mentioned. 
Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.